music has always been like a curse with me. It's the first thing in my life, go to bed thinking about it and wake up thinking about it. That's all I live for. Miles started very early. He looked at things differently. He saw things differently. Without a doubt, the most unique person I've ever known. He wanted to be an artist just like Stravinsky. A lot of the old guys thought that if you went to school, it would make you play like you were white. If you learned something from theory, you would lose the feeling in your playing. I wanted to see what was going on in all of music. Juilliard, in the daytime and at night, he'd be on 52nd Street. He put the bell of his horn right into the microphone and changed the whole world of jazz right there. He comes up with a style that is truly reflective of who he is. He was angry, antisocial. But then he starts playing and people are like, oh, he just disarms you. He surrounded himself with young, emerging, unknown voices. We were kids. We were looking at every night going to a laboratory. Miles was a head chemist. He wanted us to live on the stage, creating in front of the people. Don't lean on what you know. What he was looking for is the stuff that you don't know. We didn't just want to play with Miles Davis. We wanted to be Miles Davis. Miles' audience was changing, absorbing what was happening now. If anybody wants to keep creating, they have to be about change. I lost my sense of discipline and started to drift. Before I knew it, I had a heroin habit. Miles becomes representative of a kind of cool, kind of sophistication, a kind of masculinity. Miles and Francis, I mean, we were a hot couple. And the elevator opened and there he was. It was like in a movie when you meet the vampire and you know you're going to die and you don't care. He becomes our black Superman. All I ever wanted to do was communicate what I felt through music. 